This right here is the Umbrella Home. And I'll be honest with you, I have had more fun using this device than I have had in home labbing in a really long time. It just was one of those things that everything just kind of worked. It was simple and you just downloaded things and tried stuff out and everything just worked together really nicely. I have had more fun with this than I expected to at all. And it just kind of worked. Originally when Umbrell reached out to send this to me for review, they send it over, no strings attached, nothing like that. I don't have an affiliate program with them. If they sell on Amazon, I'll throw an Amazon affiliate link down in the description below, but that's it. Totally unbiased review. But when they sent it over to me, I was like, oh yeah, something to check out, we can see. I did not know if the price would be able to be justified. It is $600 and what that gets you is 16 gigs of RAM, an Intel quad core CPU, two terabyte NVMe, three USB three ports, and gigabit ethernet on the back. And that is a high asking price for that. You could definitely build this for yourself for cheaper, but at the same time, it just came in an incredibly easy to use polished package that the only way I can describe it is fun. This price is difficult to justify and it's really going to come down to what makes sense for you. But just from a overall enjoyment standpoint, I've had a really good time and it's just simple. So on here, there's a power button, three USB 3.0 ports, a USB C in for power and gigabit ethernet. And setting up was incredibly easy. Plug in power, plug in ethernet and go to umbrella.local on your web browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and we're gonna, gonna go through it. So when you power on up, you go to umbrella.local and it just shows up right here. First time setup, you have to create a username and password and the password has to be at least 12 characters. And then from there, you just kind of log in. It is all very, very, very simple and honestly does not have a ton of like extra bells and whistles. There's only a single user account. Pretty much everything is just managed through the apps and it is very much a basic setup. But at the same time, I don't know if that's a bad thing. If you look into the settings right here, you can see there's so few of them, they didn't even fill the entire page. Half of this is just telling you how much storage you've got and how much RAM you're currently using. It is very, very, very basic. There's not much going on here. You can't even change your DNS settings, your DHCP setting. You can't do anything with your network. Technically, the Umbrella has Wi-Fi built in, but as of right now, I did talk to them about that and they are planning on adding it by the end of the year. But right now, you can't change your Wi-Fi settings through the actual settings menu. But at the same time, it is one of those packages that just kind of works. It was honestly kind of nice just plugging it in and everything just kind of working. There are some quality of life improvements that I do think they need to make, especially when it comes to networking, just because if you don't have a dot local domain that works for whatever reason, there's no options here. So you would have to kind of do it yourself. But for the, your average user, who's just somebody who wants to be tinkering around and have fun, I think that it is at a usable place. Everything in Umbrel revolves around apps. And I should also mention, Umbrel is actually completely open source and you can deploy it on your own hardware really easily. It started out as a Raspberry Pi project and is really based off of that. Super easy way to install this thing and it's designed to really easily run. So if you wanna bring your own hardware, you will get pretty much this exact same experience. And they've got a really easy to use app store. Your updates just work. What I cannot really stress enough, and I think part of the reason why this has been so fun is adding all these new apps and all these different features with Umbrel. There are no settings to configure. You just click install and it installs it. For example, built in there's Llama GPT, which takes Facebook's old code and installing it is one click. And then you can be running your own chat bot. It is so fun and I genuinely have had a lot of fun with this where you can just start typing things. It's not the fastest. It does speed up after everything's loaded in RAM, but genuinely it has been a very fun experience for me just being able to install and try out all these different apps and services. 
I absolutely am somebody who has the full capability to deploy any one of these things on my own system. In Docker, I've got a server upstairs, I know how to use it. But at the same time, the true simplicity of the system has made it really, really, really fun for tinkering. You just come in and you look at the app stores and you just install them. You can very quickly install pretty much anything you want and it just has all the settings there. So let's just go in and say we want to install Photo Prism. Photo Prism is open source software that is great for setting up photos and kind of replacing your photo album and letting you share with users and things like that. You see, when you hit install, you just hit install and it handles everything for you. That does end up being a bit of a double-edged sword, but it means that you can get started running these things and not spending all your time trying to figure out why X, Y, and Z is broken. It is very nice having that. And in times where it has its own username and password, you can just copy and paste those right in and change them on the site itself. It makes installing all these things really easy. And as I, I have trouble really expressing why this has been so fun. And I do think it's truly been the simplicity of it and the ease of use. Within the app store here, you have pretty much all your most common open source apps that people are running on their systems. You can add Octoprint, your Nextcloud, Plex, Jellyfin, Home Assistant. So many things are just built in, ready to go, one-click deploy, just without messing around at all. It does not currently have Portainer installed, though that is coming in the next couple of weeks. But at the same time, the benefit of that is all these apps are just built in, ready to go, without having to make the volume, back up the data, and things like that. One current downside of the system is it currently does not support backups. And that is a huge issue. So it's really right now just for tinkering. I am told that by the end of the year, they do plan to have a full local backup and remote backup option that will be able to do everything. But once that's done, I do think that that is kind of the perfect start to a home lab. The built-in two terabyte SSD will be perfect for people who want to use Nextcloud and start putting all their documents and photos on there with Photo Prism and just being able to run everything. Photo Prism is just installed. And now we just need to go in and copy and paste that default login that we just created. And just like that, we're off to the races. We can go ahead and start dumping in files and things like that. It is just one of those things that just kind of works. It is remarkably easy to use and really has just made it so you can try out all these different services and apps very, very, very simply. There are so many different pieces on here that I genuinely got just set up and running without looking at documentation. This is probably the very first time I've deployed apps like this and not Googled the app at all first because you just have the single option for installation. I know I'm harping on that a bunch, but this has been an absolute blast. And as another benefit, Umbrella is completely open source and does not require using Umbrella Home. If you wanna get this exact same experience, well, minus setting up yourself and also maybe not having as much optimization for the exact hardware, you just deploy on a Raspberry Pi, a Nook or a VM or anything like that, and just be off to the races without having to do all this complex configuration. Overall, honestly, this has been a difficult product for me to review because I have had a lot of fun with it, even though it is an expensive thing that is very niche. But I think in summary, if you really want that out of box, I just want it to work and I don't wanna mess with it and I wanna be able to try all these things and not really think about it, Umbrella Home is a great option if you have the money for it. It's not something that's insanely overpriced. You can definitely build it yourself for cheaper, but for that built-in, all ready to go, simple out of the box package, I don't think anything else beats it. I think its closest competitor may be Zima Board, but Zima Board is kind of the exact polar opposite of this. Zima Board is you tinker, you mess around, you break stuff, you fix it yourself, and things like that. For example, I've deployed a few different Zima boards for various reasons to clients just to have hardware that's hopefully going to last a little bit longer than Raspberry Pi on site. And for multiple installations, the Zima boards built in time was so far off that when it got delivered that it could not even reach the app store or the update center because the SSL certificate was throwing an error. 
and so it couldn't even update. That then caused it to just not be able to update or do anything without first figuring out, oh, I've got to set the time properly and go through a bunch of different stuff by SSHing in. I also bricked one of them that had to be reloaded by actually putting a USB in and rebuilding the entire thing because I said, mount USB drives on boot. So there are a lot of little things like that that are totally fine for people who are looking to tinker and mess around and break stuff and fix stuff. And those are phenomenal learning tools. But for somebody who doesn't have the time for that and genuinely just wants out of box plug and play kind of experience that is in a nice package, I, I can't not recommend this. Really what it's going to boil down to is, is the value there for you? Because the hardware, it's decent, but the thing you're really paying for is the out of box, easy to use experience. And at the same time, supporting Umbrella, who is making this OS and really supporting develop that. At the end of the day, this has just been a really fun product. Even if you don't wanna buy Umbrella Home, check out Umbrella OS. Completely open source, completely going to be deployed on your own system. And it's just been a ton of fun for me. I honestly am going to be spinning up a VM and having Umbrella loaded on there, or I may just keep this on, just because it's great for that tinkering and trying out new things and just not getting bogged down on configuring it. It's allowing you to deploy apps like they're apps and not like they're Docker containers where you've got to build their volumes and tinker everything under the sun with it. It's a fun experience across the board. And the only thing holding me back from really recommending everybody is the inability to fully back up the system yet, though I am told that will be coming by the end of the year. All right. Well, thanks to Umbrella for sending that on over. If you have any other questions, leave those down in the description below and have a good one. Bye.